Good afternoon. I am Aisha Yanduro, and I am the Chief Executive Officer of Springboard to Opportunities. Springboard works directly with families who live in federally subsidized affordable housing. Our goal is to help these families reach their dreams in life, school, and work. As an organization, we pride ourselves on the fact that we are radically resident-driven. What that means is that we work alongside our families, trusting that they know better than anyone what it is that they need to be successful. About two years ago, I had an epiphany. And for those of you who are leaders, and we all are in this space, you know epiphanies can be dangerous, uh, particularly for our team. But during this epiphany, I realized that despite all of the hard work that we were doing as an organization, despite all of our amazing wraparound programs, such as after school programming, workforce development, health clinics, food pantries, all of the things that we were doing on site within these communities, we were not seeing an impact. We were not moving the needle. There was a disconnect between what our organization was providing and what our families truly need. Being, the, being that we pride ourselves on being radically resident driven, we did what we do. We go out and we had conversations. But this time we asked a very different question. We simply said, what do you need? Time and time again, we heard the same thing. In order for our families to address their biggest needs, they needed cash. Cash for emergencies, cash for groceries, cash for kid activities. Cash just so they could breathe. During this time, I heard from Sierra, who talked about the stress that she experienced because she didn't have the $25 her daughter needed to participate in the science fair. And then I heard from Shamika, who talked about how she had to quit her job after hitting a pothole because she did not have the resources to get her car fixed. Our families told us exactly what it was that they need. Our job is to listen. I will say that one more time. When families tell you what they need, you should listen. Our families are telling us daily what it is that they need to be successful. It is our job to be bold and disruptive and address that need. December 10th, 2018, I made the phone call that could change Arlene's life. Upon introducing myself, she immediately started screaming. She knew who I was and she knew why I was calling. I had just informed her that she would be participating in the Magnolia Mother's Trust. After her sobs of joy and her strength, screams of excitement, I asked her why was she so excited. She said, I can go back to school. I needed $1,200 to pay for a GED prep course and to pay for some debt. Now I have that money, I can go back to school. That's right, a small manageable sum to most of us, $1,200 had become an insurmountable obstacle separating her from her dreams. Obstacles usurping dreams is exactly why Springboard has launched the Magnolia Mothers Trust. This pilot is providing 20 Springboard mothers $1,000 in cash each month for 12 months to use how they see fit, no strings attached. This is the first guaranteed income pilot in the nation that specifically, strategically, intentionally recognized on the systems that have been put in place targets extremely low income black women living in poverty. It is pretty darn radical, and we're really excited. <laughs> okay. Thank you. A guaranteed income is a no strings attached direct cash benefit. The model provides people with a periodic cash payment delivered unconditionally regardless of income, resources, or employment status. In addition to the no strings attached aspect that is the Magnolia Mother's Trust, we are mindful to take a two generational lens. We are coupling this financial services for our mothers with children's savings accounts for their kids, as well as social support training, as well as, as, well as assistance from a um, social worker. I would be remiss if I did not say that this model was developed specifically in partnership with our mothers during a six month planning period. Taken collectively, we are optimistic that these efforts will afford the women and their kids access to the resources to obtain all of their dreams, whether they be educational successes, economic security, economic security or monthly self-care rituals. For all the innovation that is this pilot, the goal is quite simple to provide the breathing room necessary to help families actualize their dreams. What innovation will occur without the constant need for survival? Does the guaranteed income allow the freedom to pursue work that provides dignity, not just the paycheck? The ideal of a guaranteed income is bold. 
yet not new. This ideal has floated around in, in about political discourse for decades. Leaders from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to Hillary Clinton have already supported the ideal of trusting people and just giving them the cash they need to obtain a basic floor of living. Unconditional cash transfers demonstrate no decrease in labor participation and a significant increase in other quality of life benefits, such as mental and physical health, educational outcomes, parenting, and agency, to name a few. Yet despite the proven benefits, providing cash directly to poor individuals has often been met with criticism, S suspicion, and fear. The thinking goes that people who need financial assistance are not to be trusted as their financial position reflects a moral failing rather than a societal one. Since welfare reform, extreme poverty or people earning less than $2 a day has risen dramatically. This data is indicative of a larger systematic emergency, not a personal failing by those individuals who are experiencing poverty. A few years ago, during my time as an Ascen Fellow, I was introduced to novelist Adichie's TED Talk, The Danger of a Single Story. In this talk, Adichie warns that if we hear only a single story, we risk a critical misunderstanding. Regarding poor people, we have been telling a single story that aligns to the stereotypes that we have become comfortable holding on to. She's just a welfare queen, just somebody baby mama. They're lazy and they don't want to work. How many of us have heard that? We are only three months into this pilot, but the amazing women that we work with are already defying this stereotypical narrative. Arlene, despite having to work long hours and parent her two kids, is already enrolled in that GED prep course. She's taking her exam this spring. And there's Tanisha, who has mapped out her plan for home ownership and is working with the local credit union to and secure her mortgage. And Tacola, she's excited that for the first time she doesn't have to stress about how she's going to pay her bills. So yes, the fact that the Magnolia Mother's Trust is providing cash and a way out of poverty is important, but it is equally important that we tell the stories of the brave women participating. We know that if we are going to disrupt current financial systems within our social safety net, it will take the strategic weaving of programs directly aligned to those impacted, storytelling to disrupt dangerous narratives and courageous policies. These ambitious goals cannot be met with a one-year pilot. I am optimistic, not naive. This is why Springboard is working to develop the strategic partnerships and financial resources necessary to execute a much larger project. The goal being to implement a three-year randomized control study impacting 100 mothers annually. It is my hope that by examining the pilot as a pioneering model, a programmatic design that shifts power and influences the people excluded and, and oppressed by our current economic and political systems, we can advance a method of policy making that affirms the human dignity and belonging of us all. Additionally, I am optimistic that in telling the collective stories, policymakers will take notice of all our families are able to accomplish with the breathing room cash affords and begin to rewrite policies impacting our social safety net system. Rewriting policies to better reflect the needs of the families is not so far-fetched. For all of our ability to analyze and critique, we have become rooted in what is rather than what can be. This year has yet to write the story of the Magnolia Mother's Trust, but I am optimistic that our mothers are using this moment to take the breathing room they need. Thank you. <laughs>